everyone welcome to jm kim now today's video is on atomic structure part 6 here we will learn about schrodinger wave equation in spherical polar coordinate physical significance of the wave function xi and condition of normalization so before starting if you have not watched atomic structure previous videos do watch it i will give the link in the description box it will be helpful now let us start now first we will deal with schrodinger equation in polar coordinates now see this diagram this is our previous diagram which we have seen while dealing with the Schrodinger wave equation in previous ways. So this is our x axis, y axis and z axis and this is our 3D coordination in cuboid structure and this is our spherical coordinate. So OP is a radius vector and OP dash is a projection of OP on the xy plane. This is the xy plane, right? See this, this one is the xy plane. This is x and this is y. So, this plane is actually xy plane. So, this is a projection of this one that is OP on this xy plane. So, this projection is OP dash. Now, the angle theta which we see is actually zenith angle and the angle phi which we can see is our azimuthal angle. Now, now by geometry what we can say? Let us see. By geometry we can write x equal to r sin theta into cos phi. Clear? And y equal to r sin theta sin phi. And z is equal to r cos theta. These we have to remember. So, we can write r square equal to x square plus y square plus z square. Now, we will apply the above transformation to the Laplacian operator which we have already derived in our previous video of the Schrodinger equation. Now, we will apply this in the Laplacian operator, the Schrodinger wave equation in Cartesian coordinate system and transform the equation. So, let us write the transformed equation. Now, previously we had obtained an expression which was like this. That is delta square by delta x square plus delta square delta y square plus delta square delta z square whole j plus 8 pi square m 8 square into e minus e p j equal to 0. Now, here we will substitute the value of x, y and z. So, what we obtain let us see. Now, we obtain first 1 by r square delta del r r square delta j by del r. This is for the first expression. Okay. Now, for the second expression, we obtain 1 by r square sin theta delta by delta theta sin theta delta j by delta theta. This is for our second part. And for the third part and the fourth part, we will see in the next part. Let us see. Plus 1 by r square sin square theta delta square j by delta phi square plus 8 pi square m by 8 square same as it is previously e p j equal to 0. Now, j now is here a function of the three coordinates that is r, theta and phi. So, now we can write j as r, r and also function of capital theta and capital phi, phi. 
now we have to know that this part is our radial wave function and this two part is our angular wave function and written as y theta comma phi clear now see radial wave function actually signifies how the wave function varies along a radial distance from the nucleus keeping phi and theta constant so basically the function of the radial wave function is given here and why we have transformed this Schrodinger wave equation into the Cartesian coordinate from Cartesian coordinate to this spherical coordinate because the variables previously were not being able to be separated. Now using this equation and this coordination we have been able to separate the variables. Now physical significance of wave function. The only dependent variable in this equation is a wave function or the amplitude that is j. j can be having a value of real number or a complex number right so the later will have a complex conjugate when j is taken as a complex number it will have two numbers that is one is complex number and its conjugate number j and j star so j is given by u plus iv and j star is given by u minus iv neither j nor j star has any physical meaning but j square and j j star that is when it is real and when it is complex is physically meaningful as we know it will give us probability as we know that amplitude square is directly proportional to i that is intensity okay now in dealing with all forms of wave the square of the amplitude at any point is related to intensity of the effect at that point right and thus j square or j j star must be related to the intensity of the electron and the intensity of the electron cloud right and hence the probability of finding electron so why j j square that is this two terms j square or j j star is important because it is actually the probability of finding electron this part is the main basic important significance of wave function right now we will see the condition of normalization now what is the condition of normalization previously we have discussed a little while discussing the boundary conditions so why condition of normalization is required in order to find out the probability now we consider a electron to be confined in a small volume element dv this is the small volume element and this is the z axis and the blue one is the dx that is x axis and the now see this is the dy and we have taken a small length in order to define this dv portion right so the probability of finding electron we have already seen j square and in which volume element that is dv right so we have taken it as j square dv and see dv is given by dx into dy into dz so we have just substituted the value in this equation and we have obtained this one so the probability of finding an electron in the entire universe will be integration of all three axes right in x direction in y direction in z direction and it extends from minus infinity to plus infinity so we have taken the integration for summing up all the portions and that is integration of all from minus infinity to plus infinity j square dx dy dz which is equal to 1 we know that probability total probability is 1 so from here we get the condition of normalization to be this integration equals to 1 and this is the condition of normalization okay now this much for today thank you for watching do not forget to like share comment and subscribe